Well, hi everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube art tutorial channel. This week, I'm in the lovely Norfolk village of Stiffkey, right on the North Norfolk coast. Well, I'm in the village of Stiffkey on the North Norfolk coast this morning, and um, it's quite a nice little village, particularly when there's not too many cars around. Uh, the wind has dropped this side of the um, uh, of the North Norfolk coast, so um, we're going to pop into the village and uh, see what uh, see what we can see. Basically, maybe a subject or two. Stiffkey. Now this subject I do like, and I can sit here and paint this very scene. Well I've chosen a lovely little spot to paint this lovely little store, little village store, um, in Stiffkey. So I'm going to put it down onto uh, watercolour paper and lead you through the basic um, mixers really. Um, not too much traffic uh, along the coast road today, so um, let's get cracking. Well, it's never the easiest thing in the world to paint plein air, um, but uh, here we go. It has to be done, as far as I can see. Uh, I just love um, getting out in the countryside, uh, particularly these lovely villages where we've got um, lots of um, variety in subjects, buildings. And this little uh, store at Stiffkey is really um, a super place to um, for me anyway to uh, to paint and uh, and here I am basically now the first thing I'm going to do is start off with a little bit of sky in that top right hand corner um, it was sort of it, we did have blue sky at some point in this morning um, so I'm going to put it in uh, because I think it's it's important that we try and pick up the sort of mood of the day rather than um, than just make it up as we go along. So that's that. And notice how I've got a bead of, of colour running there. So I want that to be dry, uh, to remain damp, because to that uh, Windsor Blue, I'm going to add um, raw sienna and burnt sienna. Because we're, although we're just into spring, we do have uh, a little bit of greenery, but not too much, because I want to show off magnolia tree that's coming um, at that point. So what I'm going to do, then I'm going to paint up into that and allow that to be a soft edge, because that gives us a good fernal of depth at that point. Because behind there, is lots and lots of trees just finish that edge off there um, and uh, greenery the other side of a wall um, that's actually the other side of the main road really um, now I'm adding more of the blue Windsor blue and burnt sienna um, to create a deeper sort of green color because the idea of this, the darker I go around the magnolia bush, which is that one there, uh, the more the magnolia will show out in clear light. Uh, there's the gutter, so put that in. And uh, this is the principle. Now, I'm not going to show individual shapes of magnolia. What I'm doing, I'm using the point of the brush to actually create the illusion of um, magnolia uh, sort of blooms really um, and if you can hit that somewhere around that sort of shape there we are I, I did have the brush shaped up quite nicely there oh there you go look at that look. ah we're showing actually they do look a little bit like magn magnolia sort of uh, shapes, I think. Now, the thing we've got to be aware that we don't cover too many areas up. Because if we do, we're not going to have enough. 
magnolia sort of area to, to tint later. Now I could have tinted this first and painted the magnolia in oh sorry we could have um, put in the magnolia colour first then tinted the um, the rest um, but I've elected to actually just gonna add a bit more colour a bit more blue a bit more of the um, brown a little bit more brown in there now just to show the real dark background and hopefully that will show up and we do have a wall there so I've got to be, got to sh be a bit careful and just bringing that can I get away with that yes I can yes just got away with that there we go and that finishes that background and just to really finish it because I haven't quite finished I'm going really dark now with copious, 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 one of the amounts of blue because that should give me that real dark colour that I'm looking for as that background distant brown. There you go. So that's the way I'm going to start my magnolia tree in the background. Now while that's drying, I'm going to put in the um, the red tile roofing, pan tiles, so we have a bit of shaping there. Don't know whether I can pick that shape, those shapes up or not. Not too concerned with that, but just trying to pick up a little bit of shaping there to show the unevenness of that um, that roof. But that is in full sunlight. So I want that to remain fairly light. There we go. Remove a little bit of moisture from the brush. Because I don't want that to run. So I'm just lifting off with the point of the brush. I'm trying to lift off. Let's get rid of a bit more paint from the brush. There we are. Just It's a dry brush really. That's all that's producing that type of colour. Or that type of feel. There we go. Now the wall itself... It's that same red, but I'm putting burnt sienna with. So it's light red and burnt sienna. In actual fact, I'm going in. Just leave that ridge tile. I'm going in in places here to show a little bit of... Does that show just a touch of the old... Yeah, I think that works. Right, now I'm adding raw sienna with that because I'm going to paint the the front of the wall. Now, I've got a, a small area above there. There we go. So we're going to leave that dark at the moment, and we'll fill that in very shortly. In actual fact, I might decide not to have that uneven edge there at this stage. There we go. I'll put that in later on. There we go, that's the way you change as you develop. Uh, and I've changed. There we go. I changed my idea of um, what I need, basically. So, right, now we have an uneven edge along there. That's it. Now we're coming down there. That is a lamp. So I'm just leaving the, the lamp itself unpainted. Coming down there, um, that is more of a red tile roofing, but we'll leave that in itself, not tile roofing, red brick, sorry. And as I'm going around, just being a little bit picky, but I'm not being too fussy. Um, and that's a good thing about a large brush. You don't actually get too fussy well hopefully um, because if you do well it doesn't allow you to get too fussy which is um, something that uh, I would say helps me paint what I would call looser sort of subjects 
like that. You know, there's nothing worse than too much detail. Um, and this greenery there from that, in actual fact, that's dark um, like a chalkboard. And then this is a just having to think, sorry. Oh, that's the background, yes, that's it. That's behind the um, the bench. We've got a little chappy sitting on the bench, enjoying his cup of tea or coffee that you can get from this lovely store here in Stifke on the North Norfolk coast. Um, and um, that's the reason I'm painting. It's turned out quite nice now. Um, so um, I love painting these lovely subjects. Yeah, that seems to be working quite well. I'm adding just a little bit of some other colour to that because I want the road, that's the, the coast road there, um, which is all good. Now we've got the gravel. Now to start with, to get the gravel colour, I'm adding a little bit of cobalt to that red and just pulling that across that track, uh, that, that area there, trying to get a gravelly feel. Then as I come forward, I'm adding a little light red. Not too much, hopefully, to start with. There we go. Just painting around this lovely old barrow. Decided to put that lovely old wheelbarrow in, um, just for fun, really. Seems to work quite well for me. And now, as the brush runs out of paint, I'm really stroking it across, trying to get a lovely bit of warmth in there. Can you see the warmth coming through? And that's what uh, that's what I love to do, to get warmth in the, in the uh, subjects. Now I'm going grey now, so more blue in the red, because we've got it's like a grey stone. It's more of a clean sort of stone um, colour where this um, is the path really. I'll try and keep that fairly clean and straight. Right, there's a bit there, there's a little bit there, a bit there or a bit there. There we are. And that should go right into the door. Yep. And that seems to work pretty well. Move that. Um, and this same grey colour enhanced slightly with a little bit more blue I'm going to paint the dustbins and these dust these old bins are purely to um, allow for the um, people to put their rubbish in after they've finished their coffee which is something that we should all do. Um, all vital that we look after them. Our um, our environment really. And now a little more blue, with a little Indian red now. Just so it's cobalt blue and Indian red, because I need a slightly different shade of of this grey here for these two tubs. Lovely, lovely pots that will in, be enhanced later with shadow and everything else. As you know, my style. And, of course, that colour weakened considerably to paint the brilliant corrugated roof. There. There we go. Look at that corrugated roof that has shine on it and that's the way I would paint a corrugated roof that has shine there we are and we'll we'll sort it sort out the underside of that shortly to give the the effect of corrugation but um, there you go that is the beginning of this lovely subject in Stifke
Just going to paint this background wall now, leaving a bead of white on the top because that's vital. There is a little bit of that uh, magnolia hanging down there. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty basic really. Yeah, that's okay because it is in a, in a little sunlight, although we're going to have a bit of shade cast over that. So that's all good. Little bead of light along the top there, on top of the wall, always looks good. Now I'm using a light green cream colour, very light, for the window surround, so they're not white, and little sections down the centre, um, little crossed sections there. We've also got the this area of window work here, um, that comes across there I believe, yes it does, and um, that goes over that side as well, down the door frame, uh, the door frame this side, and the door itself, there we go, so that's more or less mopped that up, now this is a more of a cream, so I'm going to have to clean the brush, and create a bit more of a cream colour, now cream to me is burnt umber, with real sienna, um, with plenty of water. That seems to, you know, I don't know why, but it just seems to cream for me. Um, but let's just see whether I'm right. Well, that's as near as I can get to a cream. It's lighter than the background, darker than, well, lighter than all, really. Oh, and while we have this, a bit more brown in it, a bit more burnt umber, for the barrow, the actual barrow itself, because I think that uh, is a benefit. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty much getting there now. Now I've changed to the slightly smaller mop, but it still points. Put some raw sienna um, for the flesh colour there, a bit there. Mm, that's all right. Yeah, that'll do. Now uh, the figure itself is going to have a red tint, so I'm putting. Collision Crimson with a bit of brown to it, but not too much, because I want the, in actual fact, I might put a bit of yellow to that, there we go, to give that a more orangey colour, because I want this to be, this figure, to probably attract the eye, really. So, to make that figure attract the eye, let's add, um, let's add that red, it's um, cadmium red, there you go, that's the one I'm looking for. And I've got this lovely figure that sits there with a mug or a tumbler of, um, of coffee. There we go. If I can just leave that unpainted, I've got, got a chance of it looking a bit like a, someone that's sitting there having a coffee. Pulled that arm out a little bit too far possibly, but there you go. Uh, it's nothing perfect is there in life. So let's give that figure a little bit more and, and a point to the to the shoulder. There you go. Um, or what about just the hand right, coming across like that? There you go. Um, making it up as I go along. Why not? You know. And that coat lays on the bench. It is spring, but it's still not all that warm. And the legs, well, ultramarine, there we go. With that blue, sorry, with that um, cream, not cream, um, with that color, that warm tone. Uh, and there we go. So they come out. And he stretched them out, or oh, she has, he or she. We're not really worried. 
like that. I think that works. I think that works. Yep. And I'm going to put a hat on this person. Hats are worn quite a lot these days. And um, sometimes uh, they do add a bit to the, the effect. Hopefully. <laughs> right, anyway, let's... Let's break free of that, shall we? Um, because we're getting a little too fussy with that figure. Um, as you know, I don't like fussy, fussiness. Right, if that's a word. Right, now I'm using uh, Windsor Blue and Indian Red because I want to get a nice dark blue colour for these windows. Now, we're on creams here at the top. But as we come down, the blind finishes there, and we then have the darkness of inside that shop window. And if you notice how I'm trying, if I can, to leave some touches where the light is indicating coming from the left. So that's all cream, which will be painted shortly. I'm going to come right down with that there, but then I'm going to run across and finish there, and then I'm going to paint around an object there, and that will all be tinted later because. I need to show something going on in that window that perhaps I wouldn't normally bother with putting in but of course with this being a shop window um, we have things going on in the window and to show that I'm going to clean the brush again and I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow just while it's still damp in places just to depict that there is a bit of bit of light there there we go and I'll put in some brown and all burnt umber and that's that area there and that's going to go in that corner there in there, oh, and that corner, and that corner there. We're actually pulling it all together. There we are. Just to indicate there's something going on inside the window. Don't you love, don't you just love this watercolour? The way in which you can depict varying things going on, even the white paper just left there um, could be a display board of some sort. Um, and just before that dries, well, I'm going to put the cream in anyway. And this is quite a warm yellow cream. Um, but similar tone, really, to the window itself. But of course, when I come in with shadows, then it will depict that that lays at the back. That we can't depict that right now until the shadows come in. There we go. So we've got a blind down, looking through the window. Right, now we have a similar sort of thing here. So I'm picking up um, this very dark colour again for there, or fairly dark. This one is not quite as dark, which I've tried to pick up a sense of not being quite so dark. That's it. A bit more red going in now because... There are little things going on here inside this window. Show a bit of the corrugation. And then as we come down, we're beginning to leave some little gaps where we've got some things going on. 
Now inside the shop, here we go. This is what I love. The inside of the shop. Red and blue. Indian red and the um, Windsor blue to start with at the top. And remember the door? Got the door that actually has a bit of perspective to that door. Always interesting thing to do. Perspective in doors, vital. We need to go a little darker with that. Right inside there, it needs to be very dark. And as you come down, got the light coming from the left. So as I come down, I'm going to, there's just some little gaps where that, where that shrub here um, over, overlaps. But as I come down, so I'm just leaving one or two little touches like that just to help enhance that when I cut, finish paint, painting that off. Now I've got to show something going on in there. So I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going to add a little raw sienna, a little bit of red, any of the reds really, and pull that into it. Like that. There we are. Look at that. Something going on in there. What is it? Don't know. Are we really worried what it is? Not really. A bit of burnt umber. Just pull down the side of that door. Like that. There we are. And then, completely clean the brush and drag that down into that lower part there. There we are. And that is right inside the main door there. One or two little things going on there before we come to the step in the foreground. There we go. Then we just blend that through again because that's the unit and then we just pull that through and let that run through into the foreground. And that is the way I've depicted something inside the door without showing what it is. Isn't this watercolour lovely? Now I'm using cadmium red with a little raw sienna to depict these light pinky for the magnolia now the background's dry the background has to be dry otherwise it runs into it and spoils the the effect but that's the way i would give an impression of a magnolia tree here at stiffkey There we are, just enough pink. Um, we've got shadow, but that will come in later. Now we're going to have a little bit of greenery here. Just, just to take away that, where that person is sitting. Um, there we go. Um, not a great deal of colour this time of year. A little bit of greenery in the pot plants. And then I'm going to add some blue into that. Um, what sort of blue? What, what What is the blue? I don't know. Not really sure. Is there blues around this in the spring? don't know. I mean, there is, but not... It's more of a woodland plant, the um, bluebells. So that's not really appropriate, but... It's just, I don't know. Yeah, and then a little, then some brown for the um, the actual pots that are standing there, supporting these um, these plants. There we are. 
that's good enough for me. Now, now I'm looking for almost a black. Although we don't say black, well I've just said it, but um, black, which is ultramarine blue and burnt umber, because we have a a black board that has welcome to stiff key on it welcome to stiff key store now I can't I don't think I can depict that um, so we're gonna have to just imagine that I think um, but uh, we'll um, do our best just to show a little of something going on there there we go can we see welcome no we can't but there you go but I'm not really worried because all I want to pick up is the fact that it's a it's a board we're writing on which is welcome to Stifke store which after a lovely coffee there I can recommend anybody in this area please support these local stores because they they do need all the support they can get um, locals support them all year but of course out of season when uh, tourists have gone home um, sometimes it's not quite enough so if you are in the area please give them a visit so there's that that's fine now this to me looks like a lovely little subject magnolia tree bit of distance it could be a winner that one now the tire of the wheelbarrow goes in never quite so sure about this sort of part of painting but let's just see whether we can depict that somewhere it's always difficult to get the right shape well I find it very difficult anyway I'm not into these um, structures you know these mechanical structures on more trees and fields but um, there you go it has to be somewhere near it like that I think and that is the best that I can do and it's the best you're gonna get <laughs> um, brilliant so that's that now a yellow centre clean the brush it had a yellow centre that's just purely cadmium really cadmium yellow for the centre there that's fine um, brilliant I'm just using a green here to put in the bay tree it's a bay tree put in these lovely leaves that are lighter than the background and in this and, and then on the other side they're darker than the background so that's the nice thing about watercolour you can depict that in two ways there we are so that's the the bay trees put in just got to put use a rigger for finishing touches there and um yeah we're getting there now i'm going to put in some darker tones now uh, to show the gutter so we've got to be a bit careful with this don't want that gutter to be too too uniform or too um too rough really and it's going right the way to the edge there like that and then it's going to finish like that then above that with a little bit more blue and brown in that's ultramarine and Windsor blue 
I'm going to go in, sorry, uh, ultramarine and um, burnt umber. Going to put in these hook to indicate the the actual pantile roofing and that's the way I see them actually they they sort of like hook hook and hook which I think is you know normally I wouldn't put them in but obviously with when we're this close I think it's always worth going the extra mile to put them in and we will have a corrugation along there but we'll show that when we do the shadow okay that's that's okay and what i'm going to do while they're still damp i'm going to soften them into the underside with a damp brush so they just lay onto that so we've not got a gap there there we go that's better okay now I'm using light red again with a bit of some other colour there because I want to depict um, the roofing itself which in other words will be the, the light red mainly for, what's it, for the ridge tile. Now this lovely lovely ridge tile that is separated by the jointing between each tight ridge tile and it comes down like that there we are so that's worth putting in i think i think that was worth doing um and then using a similar effect going to just draw in with just a bit of a damp brush to try and indicate um, the um, the tiling on the roof that's all you all you need you don't need anything too fussy far far better not to be too fussy with that I tell you what we're not far off of finishing touches and shadows but just before I do that I want to put in the wheelbarrow and I'm using cobalt blue for this because I think that does show quite nicely that dark blue let's put a bit of ultramarine with it as well that's better because it's a lovely blue um, and the reason I liked this particular part of the um, uh, why I put this in because it picks up well against the um, the warmth of everything else in the picture and that then goes bang up to there and this then rides on a on a blue frame blue, blue sort of subframe there yeah that's good enough for us that will be perfect let's finally bite the bullet and go for some shadow work well first place for shadow to me is under the gutter running along like that finishing in that corner that is in shadow and so is that that's fine now, this is an interesting shadow. It's the shadow that comes from that overhanging area there. That goes over there and that comes from that corner. So it runs at that sort of angle. And I'm going to have it quite deep and it's corrugated. like that this is the um, principle anyway of the shadow see the way that depicts that frontage the overhang of that 
of that corrugated porch area that slips away into the corner there like that which is good then we have a shadow that runs from there across the door so that door then is becomes in shadow like that at quite a severe angle I hasten to say then we have just got to think um, obviously we have some form of shadow there I'm going to have to think about that but there is a shadow there and a shadow there just to edge that board um, or oh, we've had the lamp that goes up and down and it's on a plate there and we have the cap but the bulb is left white like that now we have exactly the same a bit more water a bit more red too blue on this but um we're getting there we're getting there my old favorite words we're getting there when I need to give myself a bit of encouragement. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. Yeah, under the sill there. Yep, that uh, that will work. I think that works okay. Let's just make that a little bit deeper at the top. A little bit deeper down the side. It didn't quite. It wasn't quite enough for me. There we are. That's better. Now shadows right under there and down there under there and down there and then you just get the little rigger slightly damped and just blend that through to show the rounded shape there we are and the same really here a bit more red in there. I want this to show up quite, um, quite severely. A little bit there, and then that's in shadow. A little bit there, and that's in shadow. But then it's rounded. So you use a damp brush just to allow some of that to actually run round, like that. And then, of course, the shadow from that runs across that, that bin, underneath and away, like that. And then that has shadow running away and down the wall, like that. This had shadow running away and down that post, like that. And then we have shadow from the... Um, the planting that's um, that's uh, that's standing there, but we'll deal with that shortly. Um, we do have shadow there under the arm, under the arm there. That's it, and round there. That's it. Got a bit more to do to the hand area. Right, a little bit of shadow here. Then a little bit of shadow there, a little bit of shadow within that, just to enhance that, just so as we can see that. This is in shadow, this side here, just with a bead of white on the top of that, like that. Now, while we have this shadow, I'm going to use that to sweep across like that because underneath there you'll have a shadow for the barrow itself and that would go like that and like that I think it may even go right the way underneath unless you put a bit like that for the wheel no let's go right underneath then we have no doubts that that is the barrow plus any planting it's on top of the barrow like that there we are and of course we have well I'm not really certain how this would go um, 
but I'm going to hook it up like that and just chance that that, that suffices. I'm not really sure that it does. Um, but there you go. I'm not going to get worked up about that right now. I might do later, but not right now. <laughs> um, brilliant. Okay. Now, the only thing I can do with that is to use this just to enhance that. Just to soften that shadow a little. That's better. There we are. Just gives an impression of a shadow. That's better. That brings everything into light. Um, nice bit of light under that. Right, now, the last thing is the shadow on the magnolia. Well, there will be a bit of shadow here um, where that magnolia is in shadow there from the building and then you'll have little bits of shadow underneath the magnolia and tuck down there there we are the two little touches underneath then we have shadow from the building so that's going to be interesting and that's going to shoot across there and across there like that right across the path and the road there we are and that's the shadow from the building itself and the magnolia that's hanging over there will create a little bit of shadow work like that well that's my interpretation anyway Good, let's just allow that to dry. And just before, in, before I put in the finishing touches, I do have a bit of shadow from that bay tree there on the wall and that bay tree there on the door, just overhanging. That's the shadow, that'll come up in a, in a second. And of course, we have, the bay has some shadow under some of the leafing. Only leaves, no bloom on a bay. Like that, I'll put in the section shortly. Um, and of course, oh, under the bench. Always an important part of any um, subject. Um, and perhaps a little bit down there, a bit down there, a little bit down the front there perhaps. I just felt it needed something to depict that bench rather than, uh, oh, and a bit across there, a bit across there, a bit across there. Yeah, that's okay. A bit underneath. Yeah, I may just see the underneath of that bench arm and underneath the arm there underneath there perhaps not but all down there down there there we go that's that's good enough i think a uh, bit more um light red going in here i just want to depict the um the soldier bricks that are standing up there always a good thing to do and then we clean the brush and we allow those to blend in like that. There we are. And that's the way I would produce those lovely, what they call soldier bricks, I believe. I believe that's the term. Um, right, hang on. Uh, hang on a minute. Um, I do have a shadow there from the path. And then that, that extends there before it goes around the corner. Good. Finishing touches. And the little, what I would call finishing touches, are really just the stem of the bay. Like that. And the stem of that one. Don't need to get too fussy with this. One or two little 
stems put in and the stem of the lovely magnolia got another one there that comes up like that I don't want to make them too formal there we are I think that's okay could be a little darker actually than that because in theory they would be in shadow so let's make that a little darker there there we go that's good enough almost black now because I've got a bin liner that's inside that bin and I want to depict that because that is the bin liner that they'll take out when the bin is um, taken away and then we've got a handle on the top that's good there we are that's that just depicts the old dustbin um, and then we have just some little touches here and there where the door is I always uh, like some little edges there a little bit of earth showing inside the, the bin Two little touches there it's just these little touches really on the door perhaps a depiction of a handle of some sort um, gotta watch we don't work for work's sake um, we don't want to overdo these um, these little um, areas that's it, that's it, just enough, just enough. Let's just clean that just a touch. Don't want to take away from the sunlight effect. That's it, there you go. And what about our good old friend, the foreground shadow? Not really thought about the foreground shadow, um, but I should do because it's vital that that goes in um, it's not necessarily um, put in everywhere as people know um, but I do have I do fancy a nice little weak shadow there in fact that's too weak so I'm going to go in with a little stronger shadow there or not necessarily on that wall but going in stronger where that meets the path there there like that right now this is where this shadow really comes into its own then I spread that somewhat weaker like that and that depicts a foreground shadow from something out of picture what it is I don't know and I'm going to put a bit of red in that because red always enhances a foreground shadow and right in that corner I'm putting a little bit more blue because red and blue do enhance a shadow to create sunlight and that's what I'm looking to do in that left hand corner other than that I think I'm nearly to the point where I want to take the surround away and um, sign up well there we go um, it's all beginning to dry nicely so I'm going to sign up in the bottom right hand corner using the paint that I used or painting this lovely little view of Stifke store on the North Norfolk coast as I saw it today well I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this um, little part of the North Norfolk coast and in particular Stifke um, which is um, more or less depicts um, these lovely old cottages that have these little 
um, local stores and eateries um, that I think we should all support. Well, if you have enjoyed that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, we'll see you all again soon. But in the meantime, happy painting.